All right, now I'm going to show you how to create a hole. If I go to the model tab, we've done pads, we've done pockets. Now I'm going to do the hole command. Under the hole command, under the hole command, if you pick a face, then it's just going to pop in a hole whatever size you want. So I'll go with a one inch hole. Okay? But when I double click on it, you don't see any constraints to change the location. So we want to set this up in a way that I can move the hole to whatever location I want. I'm going to select this hole and hit delete. Select OK. Get rid of it and we'll try it again. Under the hole command, before I grab a hole, I'll tell it what lines I want to measure from. I could select this line here and this line here. Or I could even select this line here and this line up here. And I could pick this face on the bottom, which is not even really linked or on the same plane as these two lines. So when I click here, I'm going to try and put this hole about in the center. So I'm just going to take a wild guess at it, like throwing darts. Can I get to the center? Well, I know that this is 10 inches long. So I'm a little off on that number. So we'll change that number by double clicking it. I'll change it to 5. Now I'm locating that hole specifically halfway down the part. And I know this part is an inch and a half. So I double click on that. And I could type in 1.5 divided by 2 and hit tab. And it will calculate the middle for me. So it calculated at 0.75. I'll select OK. And then I could determine the size of the hole I wanted. So I will do a half inch hole diameter at a depth of one inch and hit preview. It shows a hole. Now, did I not? Go an inch and a half. Oh, I think I went two inches wide. So I'll select OK. Uh, I'll double click this hole because I need to change the location. I thought I was three inches. I must have went two inches. So, or, yeah, I thought I was an inch and a half. I must have went two. So I'll go uh, one inch and hit OK. Hit preview. Okay, see how I have constraints showing up so I can edit these values if I want. I like to put these values out here where I can actually see the numbers and double click on them without accidentally double clicking the solid. I'll select OK. Again, notice that uh, when I double click the solid, those measurements come up, or those constraints come up, and I can edit those values anytime I want. The first way I did it, I did a hole, and I just picked a surface, but now I don't have any constraints to locate it. Later on, when you get more advanced, I have another trick for this, in case you forget. But for right now, let's just see if we can't get them right and build them right the first time. Okay, so this hole is right down the center, and we're five inches over. I want to get a hole two and a half inches over here and two and a half inches over here. So we'll do the same process. Select hole. Step number one is to select the edges you want to work from. I'm going to select that edge and that edge, even though they don't reside on that same face as this one. I'm going to pick this face. And we have different options. You've got tapered holes counterbore counter sunk holes. So let's do a counterbore hole. So I'm going to do a counterbore hole. And you know what? You don't have to memorize everything. You can just type in a value and hit preview and see what happens. I'm going to hit preview just to see what it looks like right now. And you can see that the half inch is this outside diameter here. No. The half inch is my through hole that goes all the way through it. My counterbore hole is um, this one right here. So let's go 
9 sixteenths. I'll do 9 divided by 16 and hit tab. And for my main diameter, that's your through hole, I'm going to change that to 3 eighths. So I type in 3 divided by 8 and I hit tab. And then the depth of my counter bore hole, we will make it um, let's go, let's just keep it simple, 1 slash 4, we'll do a quarter inch depth. I'll hit preview to see what it looks like. Okay, I got a type of blind hole. If I said up to last, it's just going to drill that hole all the way through the part where the other one didn't go all the way through. That was a blind hole. That's a through hole going all the way through the part. All right, notice the dimensions or constraints are not proper. I want this constraint here to be two inches. No, not two inches, one inch. One inch. So I'm right down the middle. And I'll go two and a half inches over. And now I have a counter bore hole. Okay. Let's go to view and take a look at the top view. All right, so I got a hole that went, I don't remember, an inch deep, and this is the counter bore hole. I think I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger counter bore hole. Can you modify it? Sure, in the specification tree, I find it easiest to just double click on the last hole I created. And my through hole is 3 eighths, I'm fine with that. We were at 9 sixteenths. Let's try and go to 7 eighths and hit preview. And I'll select OK. And now I got a 7 eighths inch counter bore hole with the 3 eighths inch through hole in it. OK, one more time. Now, I could go and click this same line here and this same line here, or I could go under model, pick the hole command. So I'm picking the hole feature, and I'm going to grab this edge this time, and then this edge over here, and pick this face right about. I'm going to take a wild guess and say it's going to go right about here. See how good of a dart thrower I am. 2.5003. I would say that's a bullseye for that one. I was going for two and a half inches. I, I challenge you to throw a dart and get any better result than that. And uh, I'm off by just barely over engineering tolerance 30 thou here. But you know what? The beauty of Katia, I can get them right on the number by just double clicking on them and editing them to the desired results. And instead of doing a counter bore hole, we'll do a counter sunk hole. Uh, I'll just leave it at the defaults and take a look by hitting preview. And there you have a counter sunk hole. It used the same through hole that I did last time, and it's doing up to last because that's what I did last time. So the hole is going to go all the way through. That's the through hole. And then the counter sunk is 90, 90 degrees, 20 quarter inch deep. I could change it to 120 and hit preview. You'll notice the difference there. So it's quite a bit bigger. Maybe I don't need that deep. I could just go with the eighth inch. So I type in one divided by eight and hit tab and hit preview. Now I've got 120 degrees countersunk hole that goes an eighth inch deep with a three eighths inch hole that goes all the way through. Select OK. And that is the demo on how to create holes, counterbore holes, and countersunk holes.